The ISS is dying. NASA scientists are feeling the pressure. There are just over five years left until the ISS retires, and yet they haven't seen a viable space station ready to take its place within that time frame. In this critical moment, NASA is turning to SpaceX, partnering with them to transform Starship into a space station, a project that could be their saving grace. Let's find out everything in today's episode. Every man-made structure and piece of equipment has a limited lifespan, and the International Space Station, ISS, is no exception. As we approach the end of the decade, when the ISS is expected to retire, the pressure to develop alternatives is mounting. Recognizing this burden, NASA has started planning for the post-ISS era. One of their main strategies is to lease space on private space stations once the ISS retires. To bring this vision to life, NASA launched the commercial LEO development program. Through this initiative, NASA has signed agreements and awarded contracts to multiple private companies to kickstart the development of these future space habitats. Specifically, Blue Origin and Sierra Space received $130 million to develop the Orbital Reef Space Station. NanoRacks LLC was awarded $160 million to work on the Starlab space station. Lastly, Northrop Grumman Systems Corp. received $125.6 million to build a free-flying commercial space station. Altogether, NASA has allocated $415.6 million to these companies to develop commercial space stations, ensuring America's continued presence in low Earth orbit after the ISS is retired. The issue, however, is that none of these companies have yet proven their ability to construct a fully operational private space station. According to recent reports, Axiom Space has hit significant financial roadblocks. Their plan to build a separate module and eventually an independent station seems to be faltering due to funding challenges. In another development, Northrop Grumman has decided to abandon its own space station project. And the Orbital Reef Project, a once promising initiative led by Blue Origin in partnership with Sierra Space, has also encountered major setbacks. Sierra Space has withdrawn from the collaboration to focus on their own endeavor, the Dream Chaser. Meanwhile, Starlab, another private space station project developed by Voyager Space and Lockheed Martin, is facing its own hurdles. Despite backing from big names in the industry, the project appears to be moving at a slower pace than initially planned. While 2030 is still the target year for launching any new space stations, the current situation may push NASA to look for a backup solution sooner. As of now, there is no specific plan for a government-owned research lab after the ISS retires. This is where Starship could play a critical role. Could Starship itself serve as a space station? Absolutely. Under NASA's Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities II, CCSC2 program, SpaceX and NASA announce plans to work together on developing an integrated low-Earth orbit architecture. This project not only involves Starship, but also incorporates other SpaceX programs, such as the Dragon spacecraft and the Starlink satellite internet network. It's a significant step forward, showing that NASA is seriously considering Starship's potential as a solution for the future of low-Earth orbit operations. What's crucial is to view Starship not just as a rocket, but as a versatile platform with enormous transformative potential. As Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, has pointed out, with the same volume as the International Space Station, you could do what's happening on the ISS right on a Starship if you wanted to. This vision is gaining momentum, and Starship could very well be the key to maintaining America's presence in low Earth orbit after the ISS era. To understand why Starship is so well-suited for the role of a space station, we need to look at its impressive specs. Starship, originally designed to carry humans to Mars, in its current standard version, can haul over 100 tons of cargo and has enough room for 100 passengers on a journey that could last up to six months. This means it's already equipped with complex, long-term life support systems, a critical requirement for any space station. In terms of size, Starship is truly remarkable. Its standard payload bay has an external diameter of 9 meters, offering the largest cargo space of any launch vehicle either in existence or development. Estimates suggest that the usable volume inside Starship exceeds 1,000 cubic meters, a massive space large enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower if it were disassembled. This sheer capacity has scientists and engineers excited about the possibility of using Starship as a space station. While Starship wasn't initially built to be a space station, its volume surpasses that of both Starlab and Orbital Reef. 
Compared to the ISS, which has an interior volume of less than 1,000 cubic meters, Starship could provide equivalent or even greater workspace and living areas. This opens up the possibility of creating spacious laboratories, comfortable crew living quarters, and even room for commercial and space tourism activities. Despite Starship's impressive interior volume, there's one undeniable fact. About two-thirds of its current structure is unusable space. Most of this is taken up by engines, plumbing, and especially propellant tanks, which alone occupy over half the spacecraft's volume. This raises an intriguing question. Is there a way to maximize Starship's full potential as a space station? Many experts and space enthusiasts believe that SpaceX might gradually repurpose remaining areas, like the propellant tanks and engine compartments, to convert them into habitable space. If this happens, the usable volume could triple, offering over 3,000 cubic meters of living and working space per starship. That's a staggering figure, unlocking endless possibilities for future space design and utilization. However, this conversion is no simple task. It presents significant technical challenges for SpaceX. As of now, it's still unclear how SpaceX plans to make this transformation. Got any ideas on how they'll do it? Comment below. For Starship to function as a standalone space station, it would need many of the same capabilities as the International Space Station, ISS. This includes docking capabilities for crew transport vehicles, radiation shielding, protection against the extreme temperatures of space, and the ability to provide stable, long-term power. While these requirements seem complex, with the technology and experience SpaceX has amassed, they are in a strong position to make these adjustments in a relatively short time. A great example of SpaceX's ability to modify Starship for specialized missions is the Starship HLS. This version of Starship was designed specifically for NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon. Starship HLS has already proven that SpaceX can adapt its Starship platform to meet the unique needs of a space station. Let's take a closer look at the adjustments SpaceX has made with Starship HLS. First, there's the power system. Starship HLS is equipped with large solar arrays capable of providing stable, long-term power. The successful integration of these solar panels into Starship HLS shows that SpaceX could apply similar technology to a space station version, ensuring a reliable and sustained power supply. All they'd need to do is equip Starship with larger solar panels to make it fully functional as a space station. Secondly, there's the docking capability. Starship HLS was designed to dock with NASA's Orion spacecraft. If Starship HLS can dock with Orion, Starship can certainly dock with other vehicles as well. SpaceX has solid expertise in advanced docking systems, precise sensors, and sophisticated control software. You know, Crew Dragon has docked with the ISS smoothly dozens of times. While a space station wouldn't need the same powerful propulsion system as Starship, it would still require smaller thrusters to adjust its orbit and maintain orientation. SpaceX's experience in developing and refining propulsion systems for Starship HLS could easily be applied to create an effective orbital control system for a space station. Using Starship as a space station can be considered as a potential solution to address the growing international competition in space exploration. This situation was recently highlighted by Congressman Brian Babin, chairman of the House Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee. He pointed out, when the ISS was built, it was the only facility of its kind. Today, the Chinese Communist Party operates its own space station, which has hosted Taikonauts, Chinese astronauts, in low Earth orbit, LEO, since 2021. This marks a significant turning point in the space race, as China has successfully established its independent presence in orbit. Moreover, Babin also warned that China is actively seeking international partner to conduct research on their space station. This could lead to a concerning scenario. If another station is not operational by the time the ISS retires, China's station may become the only human-occupied facility available for research in LEO. This is a situation that could seriously impact the U.S.'s scientific and geopolitical standing in space exploration. SpaceX's development of Starship not just as a transportation vehicle, but as a potential space station, combined with its participation in the Artemis program and plans to build a lunar base, is creating a a comprehensive pathway toward the ultimate goal of colonizing Mars. This strategy not only helps SpaceX accumulate the necessary experience and technology, but also contributes to maintaining the USS leadership in the new space race as competition from other nations, especially China, continues to intensify. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.